Joseph Knopf and Alexander Parent. The alternates, Jeffrey Sinkner, were underway at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium between the Mountaineers and Catamounts. Mountaineers in all white. Marcus Caldera taking a shot right off the kickoff. Vermont in green from head to toe, attacking the goal to the left. Here's Sidney Wathuta out wide. Cross early action here for the Catamounts. Cleared by Freddie Jorgensen. Blasted back toward goal by Niels Hartman. And now cleared by Ors Navarro for West Virginia. West Virginia with a nice job early on. You saw Bazzini get a touch right in the box. That is a good spot for him. So Vermont has to be pleased with that. But West Virginia showed good support. What a target there. Max Murray is in the middle. Converted center back. He has great height. He's still growing into the role up top. But he is a terrific target there for Vermont to play off of. Mountaineers 15-2-4 overall, seeking their 16th win of the 2023 campaign. That would be a single-season program record. Currently the co-record holder with the 2016 that featured West Virginia's trio of coaches, head coach Dan Stratford, associate head coach Andy Wright, and assistant coach Nick Noble. Meanwhile, Vermont 13 wins, five losses, two draws overall, one of three teams in the NCAA tournament out of the America East. We see Vermont with a really high press right now. Something that proved to be fruitful last week against UCF. Don't see too many teams pressure West Virginia because of its ability to counter just like this. So many talented attackers on this Mountaineer squad. And this is Utaro Sukata entering the box against Sebastian Jebhart. Down in the box. And a goal kick won by Vermont. Great defending by Gebhardt, the grad student from Rosenheim, Germany. It's an early challenge there for Gebhardt against Sukata. And you hear the Vermont bench thrilled with the defending there in the early moments. Will be a big boost to the confidence there for Gebhardt as, you know, there are no secrets here, I don't think, at this stage of the game. West Virginia wants to get it to Sakata, play through him, have a lot of touches, and Gebhardt does a nice job up to the challenge here in the early going. All right, Adam Zundel, let's get your keys to a Vermont victory on the road. Well, as we'll see here, Vermont has terrific height. If they can start winning these second balls and control the midfield, that will go a long way to winning the midfield here for the Catamounts. And then they really want West Virginia to defend for long stretches of time as the Mountaineers are on a counter. Look out here. Good ball to Sukata. Sukata has scored. It's a dream start for the Mountaineers. And they are dreaming big at the Lesk Stadium. West Virginia won, Vermont nil in the fourth minute. Mountaineers take advantage of the opportunity. Sukata with a brilliant touch to himself to put it away. Gets around the keeper to give West Virginia a 1-0 lead here early going. And that man keeps doing it. Here's Caldera with a beautiful ball. And you think he might take it one time there. Plays it to himself and scores it. Turnover in the midfield. We just talked about that as a key. West Virginia won that one. And again, brilliant stuff there by Utaro Sakata to put it away and give West Virginia the early lead. However, as we saw last week, UCF got up early on Vermont. Vermont was able to come back, got a lead in that game. So this is not unfamiliar territory here for this Catamount team. But it is a patient goal from the Tokyo Japan sensation, Yutaro Sukata, his 11th goal of the season, his 12th goal as a Mountaineer, his fifth goal of the postseason. He had the winner against Louisville. He scores the opener against Vermont. Yeah, as we see here for West Virginia, I should have added score early to the keys to the game, but uh, handling, handling Vermont's press so far has gone well for West Virginia. Need to continue to do that. Organized in transition, that was both offensively and defensively. We saw that very organized going forward, but if West Virginia turns the ball over, they have to be really organized defensively to keep Bazzini at bay. And then uh, we talked about the height for Vermont, really good on set pieces. West Virginia has to be organized and clean and defending and and probably better yet, not allow 
a lot of those opportunities. Marcus Caldera on the ball. He had the assist on the Utaro Sukata goal, his second assist of the season, seventh of his career. Caldera has not scored for West Virginia in its last seven matches. He is the team's goals leader with a dozen on the year. Sukata now has one less than Caldera, but he has contributed in many ways. The assist there, but really his main involvement recently for WVU has been hold up play, helping the Mountaineers possess the ball and move forward, even though he hasn't been scoring. Yeah, we've talked about what a complete player he is for a majority of the season, and that goes with not just holding up the ball and, and serving and, and, and providing great service, but it's also tracking back and defending. So Marcus Caldera is an effective player for West Virginia in a lot of different ways. Of course, scoring the goals is, uh, is a really important part of that. If you're just joining us here in the fifth minute of this third round match, the first third round match, you missed a flare of excellence from Yutoro Sukata, the opening goal with just over three minutes into the contest. Here's Sukata again. His cross is deflected and then cleared into touch by Zach Barrett, the first team All-America East senior. By the way, eight all-conference players on this Catamounts roster. West Virginia put five on the All-Sun Belt roster. And when we talked to Coach Dow about how to stop West Virginia, he just he, he knew that they were going to be able to score goals and were so potent up top and not just Sakata and Caldera, but Wurz Navarro as well, and Olakainen. Um, and he didn't want to get beat by those players. You try to make somebody else beat you, but when you have such a large uh, number of weapons, that can be difficult in West Virginia in the early going has the better of that. Well, when West Virginia can get one of Caldera or Sukata going, that's good news for Dan Stratford's side. When they can get both guys going, well, look out. Here's Caldera out wide. He can drift into these wide positions and be effective. Left-footed cross is headed down by Gebhardt and controlled by the Catamounts. Clearance from Carter Johnson to try to spring Wathuta forward. Deflected out of play. Adam, look at these stats here. Sukata Caldera, so good. 23 goals between the tandem of roommates. One of just three pairs of teammates in the country uh, in the country, in top 30 in points. I mean, maybe it's hard to say they're the best striking tandem in the country because there are a lot of good teams still left in this field. But I think Coach Stratford would be fine with taking these guys over anybody. Yeah, you would take your chances with that too, with, with those two. And we've seen them together at practice and something that's not on that stat sheet is the chemistry uh, between the two of them. They have a good time. Uh, they know each other well. They know where each other's going to be. And, and that is just something that, uh, you know, you can't put those goals together. We see a hard foul there. You can't put those players out there and just expect that output. I think it's the combination of the two that has made them uh, so good this year. Our referee, Stephen Foster, is sorting things out. We're going to take another look at this. Don't think a yellow card is deserved here, Adam. No, I don't think so. Not a whole lot of malice in that one, trying to get that ball. Will lead to a talking to, though. Rob Dow's side is physical, is so stubborn defensively. That's what he told us this week leading up to this match. He wants to be known as the most stubborn defensive team left in this field. Yeah, and, and I like how he defined that as just making you uncomfortable uh, or making, you know, the uh, opposing team uncomfortable. And uh, I think, unfortunately, right now here in the, the first eight minutes of play, West Virginia has been a little bit too comfortable if you're a Vermont Catamount fan. Uh, Caldera and Sukata. Service from Jorgensen, collected by the goalkeeper Owen Jack. Now Hernando was lurking on that back post, but Jack got to it. Catamount's acting quickly to try to get things restored. It didn't come off there, but Adam, do you expect to see that from Vermont? Well, they've got to fi figure out a way to get Bazzini into some space. And uh, I think that right now, you know, I don't think the strategy, the tactics changed that much. They did not change that much when they uh, let in an early goal last week against UCF. Take another look at that free kick delivered there by Jorgensen. And, you know, I think Vermont can thrive in transition moments. And 
That doesn't, that doesn't look like an obvious transition moment when the, when the keeper makes a save, but Vermont tried to make it into one. For West Virginia, that's the 43rd goal of the season. Mountaineers average two goals per game, the Utoro Sukata tally in the fourth minute. Meanwhile, Vermont averaging about a goal and a half per game, but has only conceded now 17 total goals on the year. That's less than one per game. And here is a chance to counter for the Catamounts. This is Carter Johnson, who scored the winner against UCF. Brought down to the turf by Fred Jorgensen. And the referee reaches into his pocket. A yellow card issued to Jorgensen in the 10th minute. First player in Stephen Foster's book. Yeah, I believe that uh, with uh, Johnson trying to get to goal and being taken down, that'll lead. Oh, yeah, that is... Uh, I don't think there'd be much argument there on the card. And a dangerous moment. We talked about moments of transition and winning the midfield and, and, and Vermont's press, and we saw all of those things in effect and in, come into play just in that scenario. This is a great position, too, about tw between 25 and 30 yards from goal here for the Catamounts. You see Carter Johnson on your screen. At 5'11", he's not necessarily the biggest target for Vermont, but Max Murray, the 6'5", senior striker, that's a target. Jake Ashford, 6'2", Zach Barrett, 6'1", if the two center backs are up in the box here. Four-man wall for West Virginia, it appears. Jackson Lee between the sticks for WVU. This is his 22nd start. He's played every minute in goal for West Virginia allowing less than a goal per game on average. Here's the restart over the goal. Goal kick West Virginia. That was Lockerman taking that one in. Lockerman actually scored on a laser last week against UCF for about 34 yards, so not surprised to see him take that, try to put it on frame. Uh, Bazzini scored on a free kick. It was in a different position. Um, he actually squeezed one in near post. It was a really well-placed shot, um, but that one probably called for a little bit different of an approach, so you see Lockerman take that one. And, you know, West Virginia doesn't want to get into those moments, though, and continue have to, to defend uh, free kicks and set pieces, um, as, as we mentioned earlier. It's part of the keys for a West Virginia victory. Just about 10 minutes gone here in this third round contest in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mountaineers leading 1-0 on an early goal by Utaro Sukata. Shades of the Marshall match for West Virginia. The win over Marshall, I should say, over the number one team in the nation. West Virginia used its high press to dismantle the thundering herd in a 5-2 victory back on October 18th. Could be Vermont maybe trying to employ a similar tactic with its high press. Just taking the ball away in the midfield from West Virginia a couple of times. Yeah, Vermont is so organized defensively that uh, when you can catch them in a transition moment and turn them over, that is a really important component as Johnson runs on this one. Flag is up. Carter Johnson maybe a step or two offside. Carter Johnson, a valuable addition to this Vermont squad. You, you talked about him transferring early, and he scored the game winner last week, but he was looking for a program to try and compete for a national championship, and he certainly has found one here in Vermont. Yeah, not a lot of transfers on this Vermont roster, just a handful that have been hand-picked to help the Catamounts try to get back to the quarterfinals or maybe beyond. Johnson, one of them from Utah Valley. Bazzini is in his second season. Uh, after transferring from NC State. Ashford, the senior center back, played four seasons at Creighton and went to the College Cup last season, so he knows a thing or two about playing meaningful games in November and even December. And then Jack, the goalkeeper, we mentioned that he's a grad transfer from Stetson. Played on a team that leaked goals, but he's been much better in the net this season. Here's Luke McCormick in the box for WVU. Thinking about two! Oh, I think Jack got a touch to it. Yes, he did. Great save by the redshirt senior transfer from Florida. It's a corner kick coming for the Mountaineers. Yeah, you talk about all of the offensive weapons that West Virginia has, Sakata, Caldera, Ors Navarro, and there comes Luke McCormick at the top of the box firing a shot. And you see Jack is really not pleased with the defending there. He is forced to make a brilliant save and keep this a one-goal game, but it will be a corner here for West Virginia. McCormick, six goals on the season, 15 in his Mountaineer career. He's a fifth-year midfielder from Derby, England. He's one of two players on this West Virginia team, the other Kyle Lehnert, 
from that 2019 MAC tournament team. That's the last trophy that West Virginia won the year before Dan Stratford took over as the head coach of his alma mater. Corner kick here from Freddie Jorgensen in the 13th minute. Back post and headed away by Vermont for the moment. Turn toward goal. Jack collects. That was a good piece of defending there on that back post. There by Vermont. It was Lockerman. And he was tying up a West Virginia player, and it's going to be another kind of late tackle. Vermont's going to want another card. I don't think it's going to be coming, but. Reaching yep, into the is. left pocket is Stephen Foster to show a second yellow card to a Mountaineer in a span of less than five minutes. This time it's Broughton who was cautioned in the 14th minute. It was not the goal scoring opportunity that the previous one was, but it did look a little bit late. And another card earned, which could be a factor here early on in this one. Two players for West Virginia in the book. You mentioned the impact transfers for Vermont. A lot of impact transfers on that back line for West Virginia. Broughton is one of them. Restart from Bazzini. Lee is up, and he has it. Lee himself, a transfer from George Mason in his second season with WVU. Sukata can't control it. Here's Bazzini. Oh, hard tackle there by Olakainen. Right through the attacker, but Vermont maintains possession. This is Sidney Wathuta. Crossing toward Lee, and he handles that one. You mentioned West, uh, the transfers from Vermont with some tournament experience. Well, Vermont had a terrific tournament run last season, making it all the way to the quarterfinals before losing to the eventual national champions. So this is not, again, we say there's no accidents in the NCAA tournament, so Vermont has earned every step of the way that they have gotten in on another a terrific run here this season as well. Catamounts love the number three apparently in the NCAA tournament. They've won five national tournament games in the last two years, scoring three goals in each of them. It's so interesting because it is a program that is, is founded on defensive principles and then to kind of find their stride offensively in the NCAA tournament is almost like a dream come true. Uh, and also three consecutive NCAA tournament births. Which is a record for consecutive tournament appearances for the Catamounts. Here's McCormick. A little roar from the Delesk Stadium crowd as he charges forward. Ors Navarro just outside the box. Mountaineers settling into possession here. Good recovery there by Vermont. West Virginia was not quite able to get the numbers forward. I think it would have liked in that moment. Here's Otto Olakainen, the Con junior from Finland. Yeah, content to possess now. And we talk about uh, the midfield and kind of controlling that. I think West Virginia's controlled possession. Uh, there have been some times where both teams have bypassed the midfield a little bit, but I think by and large, West Virginia's been pleased with its performance in those at times. Broughton not hesitant to slide into that tackle, won it cleanly. Mountaineers have given possession away again, though, near midfield. You mentioned possessing the ball a moment ago. So much credit belongs to 8 and 23 in the Mountaineer midfield. Ola Kynan, number 8, and Ryan Bear from North Carolina. They just combined to just take that ball away, Nick. Right on cue, springing Utaro Sukata forward. His pass is behind Luke McCormick. But that's what they did against Louisville. Bear and Ola Kynan bossed the midfield. That's what Dan Stratford said after that match. Might have played their best half of the season in the second half against Louisville. And played a key role in allowing West Virginia to win that game 1-0. Here's a counter chance for the Catamounts. A bit too strong on the pass to Max Murray. Good defending by Broughton. Well, not just really good defending by Broughton, but also to hold on to that ball and try to get West Virginia going forward rather than just kick it out. I thought, it might have, thought he might he have just kicked it out of play. But he was able to hold on to it. Try to get West Virginia to possession, but Vermont is really battling for it back. Boy, this press is relentless from the Catamounts. Johnson deflected one into the box. Broughton has to send that skyward. Catamounts have one possession back, throw in here. So we've got an injured player on the far side of the pitch. I think that's Carter Johnson, who scored the game-winning goal in extra time against UCF. Yeah, a lot of pressure here 
by Vermont. West Virginia just trying to get something going forward. You see that ball? Oh, I think it might have been the uh, way that the ball hit the second team All-America East player, Car Carter Johnson. That's why he's down in a heap of pain. One more look at it. Hernando just trying to clear the ball. And it ricochets off Johnson. He's down near the corner flag. But Adam, I'm impressed by this press from the Cadamines. Yeah, it's a, it's been effective at some times. They've been able to win the ball and, and get some opportunities going forward. Not a lot of quality here in that final third, though. So they're able to get something going a little bit, uh, but not able to have some touch and some uh, precision in this final third, which is going to be what is necessary to break West Virginia down here and try to come back into this one. Slap of the hands there between Hernando and Johnson, almost sure. apologetic there from Hernando. Johnson, such a unique story, played four seasons at Utah Valley. He's making his 80th collegiate appearance today. Married a young woman named Juliana, who also played soccer at Utah Valley from 2018 through 2022. Not so often that you see players who are married continuing to play college soccer. I'm sure Johnson's family was thrilled after his game winner against UCF. <laughs> beautiful goal, beautiful moment. We showed the highlight earlier. Man, the look of excitement on his face. It was as if that guy had just taken over the world. Yeah, and when it comes to the NCAA tournament, you have to play with a level of, of desperation. And I think that's one of the things that Vermont has done here as of late. They had some soul searching to do after they lost in the conference tournament to NJIT. But right now they're playing desperate. And we saw on that goal, Carter Johnson come flying in. So he's taking a chance. He's taking a risk. He's playing with that desperation that helped lead to that goal and send Vermont on into this round here today. So it looks like Johnson will leave the pitch temporarily. 17th minute, five seed West Virginia leading Vermont 1-0 on the strength of the fourth minute goal from Yutoro Sukata. Vermont will not make a substitution, so Johnson standing next to Jeffrey Skinker, the fourth official, getting ready to check back in as soon as he can. And Johnson will return to action here through the bottom of your screen as West Virginia wins a free kick. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here with you. You're watching NCAA Tournament third round action live from Dick Delesk Soccer Stadium. The first of eight matches in the third round. Two more this evening on the West Coast, then five tomorrow as we narrow this field down from 16 teams to eight ahead of the national quarterfinals. One game of interest, of course, here in the Mountain State. Number one Marshall taking on 16 seed Stanford. That's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Thundering Herd, of course, beat West Virginia in the Sunbelt Conference Championship game two weeks ago, a 3-2 final. It's a sold-out crowd at Dick Delesk Soccer Stadium. Coming to life a bit midway through this first half. Pass from Murray is taken away by Jorgensen, who goes to ground. Free kick, West Virginia. I'm going to be really curious to see how that card affects Max Broughton in the middle, because that's going to be, he's going to have some players coming his way. Max Murray is going to have the ball a lot, and he's going to have to contend with him. He has to be really careful in defending, carrying that yellow card. McCormick possessing and turning. Here's Ors Navarro on the left side. Back to McCormick. Going to ground is Gebhardt and winning the ball for the moment. Far side, Jorgensen and Urs Navarro again looking for Bear in the midfield. Great ball to McCormick who's onside. Yutaro Sukata deflected. Bear tries to tap it back to Sukata. Johnson has it and sends it forward to Murray. Good defending by Broughton to turn him away immediately. Mountaineers will try it again from that wide flank. You see Ors Navarro helping to support that side, overload that side. They want to send another player in there, stretch that defensive uh, shape really wide 
for Vermont and get, leave some pockets in behind that towards goal. It's interesting that uh, Ors Navarro is the right winger, but is all the way on that side, and it was almost as if Sukata was playing as a striker with Caldera as the near side winger. I think they're just going to go and try and find the space uh, it, when, it, when it called for it uh, to try and go ahead and fill that. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, that, that front three uh, can overlap and do some different things and be in different spots. McCormick is not fouled. He went to ground. It's a goal kick. Referee shaking his head. Uh, Utara Sakata is, uh, he's got to be marked uh, a little bit tighter than that, but that is really the strength of the Vermont defense. Those two center backs right in the middle, right in front of that goal. That's going to be a tough space uh, for Sukata na to navigate, but I'm guaranteeing you, Coach Dow does not want to see Utara Sakata all alone getting that ball at his feet. It's a great observation by you, Adam, because it was a tactic, tactic that Coach Stratford employed against Louisville. It was Utaro Sukata going against the fullback for Louisville, Louisville, Quinton Elliott. They wanted to try to get Sukata away from him, so they put him on the other side of the field. And what did the Cardinals do? Well, they moved Elliott to the far side fullback position, and ultimately Sukata did get the better of the West Virginia native Elliott to score that goal, which came, it is worth noting, from the middle of the park instead of out wide is when Sukata really had his best moment. Rotten takes the restart from midfield. Here's Bear. Boris Navarro to McCormick. Mountaineers trying to pick apart this Vermont back line, but can't do so on that occasion. Yeah, I, going back to that point, Nick, I think it's important for West Virginia to not be predictable in the attack uh, and not be in one place where you know you're going to just kind of hit it wide and cross it and, and, and hope for something. And I think that's something that West Virginia has done well this season is put players in some different spots, sometimes go to that end line and send it across, sometimes cut back towards the middle. So uh, when it comes to teams scouting you, you don't have, um, you know, you obviously you do have some tendencies, but you do have a level of unpredictability to you. Um, to your profile that makes you difficult to defend. West Virginia out shooting Vermont 4-1. Shots on goal, two for West Virginia, none for the Catamounts. WVU's goal coming from Yutoro Sukata in the fourth minute. The other shot on goal by Luke McCormick, which was parried away by Owen Jack. Good cross toward Gebhardt, diving for it is Jackson Lee. You see Freddie Jorgensen slow to get up a little bit, but he looks like he will be okay. And Gebhardt does a nice job flying in. We talk about taking some risks and playing with some desperation. Going to get a great look at it here as Gebhardt comes flying in. Does a nice job. And Carter Johnson is lurking there. If Jackson Lee is not able to field it or field it cleanly. Mountaineers struggled to play it out of the back there. Chance for the Catamounts. Johnson on the right side. Drops it back. Shot is deflected. On comes Hartman. Hartman sends it in. The header flicked on goal. Lee collects once more. Johnson's becoming a little bit of a, of a problem there for West Virginia. A couple of good touches. And, and in that last sequence, West, uh, Vermont doing a nice job of holding the ball and moving it from side to side, playing a little bit quickly. That was the best uh, spell of, uh, of attack here in, that, in their final third here. Free kick, West Virginia. Mountaineers scored early. That's the story of Vermont's most recent game against UCF. Catamounts came back to win that one after giving up a goal about 90 seconds into the match. They did respond in the first half to tie it 1-1 heading into the locker room. Still no response yet from the Catamounts, who did just record their first shot on goal of the game. This is Daniel Pacella pointing and splitting Max Murray through. Trying to connect with Johnson. Hernando with a great sliding challenge. Murray deflects it, and it's out for a goal kick. A courageous and well-timed there by Hernando to win that one. And again, Carter Johnson is continuing to be a problem here for West Virginia, finding some space behind that back line, but Hernando does a nice job. Talked about resiliency from the Vermont squad and, and coming back last week. But last year, 
Again, a lot of similar players or a lot of players on that squad. Down 2 nothing on the road at SMU. We're able to battle back and again advance. Hostile environment in, in the Dallas area. We're able to come back. So this is a, a, a team, a Vermont team, that will not lack confidence and will not hang its head here today. 25th minute, Mountaineers leading thanks to Yutaro Sukata's second goal of the national tournament and fifth of the postseason. He had a trio of goals in the Sun Belt tournament. That was a good find there by Caldera to find some space. West Virginia unbeaten here at Dictalesque Stadium this season, 7-0-3, allowing just six goals all campaign. A 15-match home unbeaten streak dating back to September of last year. They call this place their fortress. Maybe it's more accurately their dreamland because they are dreaming big here. And for visiting teams, playing here, often a nightmare. Sukata. Going to try to bait the defenders. Johnson, the forward, has come back to help out. And that's what it's going to take to slow down Utara Sukata. You're going to have to have some players tracking back. Look out, Ryan Bayer hit the deck. A heavy touch there from Bazzini allowed Hernando to recover, and the Mountaineers win it back. McCormick with three green jerseys around him. Somehow breaks free. He could lay it off to Ors Navarro. Ors Navarro slipped. I think Sergio Ors Navarro was dreaming of trying to get that ball out wide to uh, Marcus Caldera and just could not get around the ball to send it back out wide. Pass was a little bit behind him, too. Here's Dante Huckabee, the Morgantown native, who defeated his former teammates, the Louisville Cardinals, in the second round. Caldera to Ors Navarro. Huckabee overlapping against Nick Lockerman on the near side. And while West Virginia is, is thinking of another goal here, a lot of numbers forward. Have to be careful to not give a bad giveaway and lead to a counter, but now, now settling a little bit back more into a, a normal defensive shape. Mountaineers will have a chance to reset and try again. As we were going through the, the keys uh, for Vermont, we, we went through them a little quickly because a goal <laughs> a goal scored, so it wasn't quite uh, uh, up to form for Vermont, but one of them was to make West Virginia defend. And right now, West Virginia is making Vermont defend for a lot of this first half here, so it really turned the tables. But this is exactly what Vermont would want to do to West Virginia to try and control this game and, and get back into it. Good takeaway by Lockerman. Wathuta, he's dangerous on this near side. Wathuta's cross, a mess in front of goal. Here's a chance, it falls to Bassini, deflected by Hernando, back on target from Hartman, saved by Lee. All started in transition with the turnover, and, and Vermont got going forward. Wathuta is dangerous on that left side and really created a mess in front here that almost led to a Vermont goal. Nice work by Wathuta there to create some space. I thought the ball maybe popped up and hit a Vermont hand, and I thought Bazzini was going to get that ball off of his foot. And Jackson Lee does a really good job following that ball in as there was some traffic in front of him. So he did a really good job by Jackson Lee to stay on that one and make another key save here for West Virginia. Boy, the Mountaineers will not be given a moment to breathe here. This Catamounts press is the real deal, forcing a number of turnovers that's allowed Vermont to go from trailing in shots four to one about 10 minutes ago to now out shooting the Mountaineers seven four, but still not yet a goal to show for it for the visiting Catamounts. Mountaineers played their game in the first third of this first half. In the second third of it, the Catamounts have played theirs. Throw in West Virginia. 
And again, that uh, that sequence came after a pretty long spell of possession for West Virginia, and then in an instant, it switched. And really good opportunity there for Vermont. And I, I wonder if Bazzini might be double thinking that or thinking about that one again, getting that uh, sh getting a shot off perhaps. Bazzini is the team's leading goal scorer, 11 goals on the season, three of them coming in the NCAA tournament. A brace against Ryder, a goal and an assist against UCF. Flicked high by Murray. Look out here, deflected. Coachella getting involved, rather that's Hartman getting involved. Now it falls to Bazzini, who sends it centrally to Johnson, who whips it to the side to Gebhardt. The cross from Gebhardt, Lee hustling, and has it. Another good sequence in and around the box here by Vermont, and that time the ball moved well from the left side to the right, creating an opportunity. And again, I think Jackson Lee's done a nice job here today. Came off his line there to read that one well. And he has responded to some early moments here. Vermont has, has tried to put him under duress, and they've done so. Mountaineers get a bounce there. Looked like Hartman had gobbled that up near the midfield circle. Instead, the Mountaineers are into the attacking third. Sukata, the goal scorer, his cross deflected by Gebhardt and then cleared by Zach Barrett. Huckabee wins it back. Good touch by Olakainen. Back to him. Now Huckabee thinking about a cross to a green shirt cleared away by Ashford, and it's a throw in for West Virginia. Catamounts looking to counter again here. Gebhardt slowing up the pace just a hair. Forward to Murray. And here's Johnson. Pacella back to Johnson. Johnson has space. Johnson on his left. 1-1. One, one. Carter Johnson had the winner against UCF. He has the equalizer in Morgantown. All squared in the 32nd minute. We've said it a few times here in the first half. Carter Johnson has been a problem for West Virginia. He proves to have the equalizer here. Just way too much time and space with the ball at his feet. No one steps to him and really closes that down. Hernando is trailing. Deflection leads to that goal. Not much Jackson Lee can do about that off the deflection. And we're all tied up at one here. Mountaineers maybe caught a bit of a break on their first goal. Johnson's leveler comes the opposite direction on a counterattack. We're all squared at one apiece just past the half hour mark at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium in this third round clash between WVU and Vermont. And what do you know? Catamounts gave up an early goal against UCF, equalized and were level at halftime. Maybe the same story here in the third round. A trip to the quarterfinals is on the line. Mountaineers went to the round of eight in 2021 and lost to Georgetown. Vermont went to the round of eight last season and lost to the eventual national champion Syracuse, two goals to one. Adam, how do you expect the Mountaineers to respond? Well, I think, uh, I don't think Many people thought this game would be 1-0, and I think everyone understands that Vermont is a quality side, resilient squad. This is not an unusual scenario, I think, in this moment to think that Vermont would have found their way back into this into this match. I think West Virginia needs to kind of get back to, to what has worked for them, getting that ball up top and getting it to Utara Sakata, who's had uh, far fewer touches here in the last 15 to 20 minutes than they did in the first 
Um, but again, I, I don't think the fact that Vermont has, has clawed their way back into this one uh, should come as much of a shock or surprise or as a gut punch to West Virginia. So I would expect to see, you know, both these squads have been resilient this year. So I expect to see uh, some resilience from West Virginia, as we have seen uh, Vermont already put that on display here. Certainly so. The Catamounts deserve to be here in the round of 16. They deserved that goal. Yeah, I felt like one was coming, right? And uh, just things got messy in the back for West Virginia for the last maybe five or ten minutes, and Vermont was able to take advantage of of that and come up with a, with a nice goal. And again, Carter Johnson has been all over the place and, and uh, continues to be a problem here as he's on the ball. Johnson's left-footed cross. Player went down in the box. Broughton, I think, lost his footing there. Mountaineers able to clear it. Keeping the pressure on are the Catamounts. Back post. Johnson right to Lee. Boy, how things have shifted in this match here in the 34th minute. It's level on the score line, but Vermont now out shooting West Virginia 9-4. to four. Yeah, Carter Johnson with a... a, a he has just uh, been a menace here in these stages, and we talked a lot about Bazzini coming into this and how well he was playing, and, and Carter Johnson has been... Uh, the best player wearing green here today. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Not just the goal, but uh, his work rate uh, back and forth on this field and the opportunities he's created. He's got seven goals on the season, including a pair of game winners. He had just four goals in his entire career at Utah Valley, spanning four seasons. Great touch from Caldera. Sent a couple of catamounts down to the turf. Caldera thinking about it. Caldera deflected. What a great run that is from West Virginia's goals leader, the striker from Canada earns a corner for WVU. Well, he did uh, yeoman's work here to get free. We can count him up. One, two, three, four. Another one, six. And I think, though, after he did all that, he wanted to get that shot off, but I think there might have been an opportunity there with Sergio Ors Navarro in the middle of the field. Might have had a, a more clear opportunity to try and put that one away. But you really can't blame Marcus Caldera for having done <laughs> all that work to try and uh, fire off a shot. Trainer is on the field here as Adrian Scholz Solano, the junior from Germany, has picked up an apparent injury on that last run of play. Scholz Solano came on as a substitute after the Johnson goal, along with Jacob Vitali in the midfield. And Vitali was up top there he had just missed a, a really gorgeous opportunity for Vermont before that last sequence there by Carter Johnson to, on the header um, but Vitali was put himself in a really good spot to potentially put Vermont up here late in this first half well the Catamounts have maybe not been globe trotters in the NCAA tournament but close to it a lot of travel for this Vermont side this is the itinerary to get to Orlando and then to get to Morgantown for the second and third rounds of action. Somewhere between 27,000, 2,700 miles and 3,500 miles of travel just to get to Orlando. As the crow flies, it's 650 miles from Burlington, Vermont to Morgantown, West Virginia. That is a ton of travel that we are told that the team did charter from Vermont to West Virginia for this third round contest. Get those credit card miles uh, uh, racking up points, and uh, <laughs> I think, but I think Coach Dow described it as more like planes, trains, and automobiles, so not sure. quite glamorous. And the athletes get their per diems too. Don't forget about that. <laughs> Play resumes. Sukata drops it to Ors Navarro. Ors Navarro. Back to Sukata. He's on side. Sukata left footed. Oh, it almost found the back post. Caldera's there to flick it back in. Punched by the goalkeeper, Jack. Caldera back to an onside position. Caldera whipping it in. Headed away this time by Barrett. Maybe one more chance for West Virginia. Bears cross is behind his teammate and flicked away by Bazzini. A uh, great piece of defending there by Vermont on that back post to clear it off the line. Sukata to Hernando. That one popped up on Hernando. 
Mountaineers made a change. Kyle Lehnert with his first touch. He's into the match, replacing Dante Huckabee, who made his ninth career start in today's contest. Mountaineers healthy for the most part, but they're likely without their starting right back, Toma Dicotine, who missed the Louisville match and may also be inactive for today's match. Did go through warm-ups. We were told he was going to be a game-time decision. He has not checked into the match yet. Under 10 minutes left until halftime. All squared at one apiece. Sukata, the scorer for West Virginia. Johnson, the scorer for Vermont. Here's Sukata again. Here's Sukata again. No penalty. It's a corner. That's mm. the second time Sukata has gone down in the box. Mm. That's associate head coach Andy Wright for West Virginia, who seems to disagree. Let's take another look at it here. Oh boy, that is uh, that's a tough one. I think as he definitely was tripped up. I think uh, I think that one maybe should have been a penalty there for the Mountaineers. It's a corner instead for West Virginia. Ball whipped in, flicked on. Hernando just wide. Now Hernando with a nice job getting his head onto that one. Thought it might curl in, but it heads over the crossbar. In West Virginia, you talked about the response, Nick. I think West Virginia responded really well. Mm. Been really good in some moments on the attack. Uh, got the ball to Utaro Sakata as prescribed and uh, puts, put uh, Vermont under pressure here in these late stages. Johnson draws a foul against West Virginia midfielder Ryan Bear. I do think that was a foul, but I also think Carter Johnson did a really good job of drawing that foul, using his body, making sure that he was engaged and, and drawing that that foul, making sure that whistle was was called. You see the later stages there with Bear's arm around Johnson, but Johnson was backing into him as well to get that. Uh, to make sure that that whistle was blown. Again, I do think that was a, there was a foul there. I also think Carter Jones did a nice job of making sure that the whistle was blown. That's Constantinos Christou next to associate head coach Andy Wright talking tactics. Caldera is fouled. Minimal changes so far for West Virginia. believe the only swap is Lehnert for Huckabee. Catamounts have used three players off their bench. Shoal Solano, Andrew Miller, and Jacob Vitali. Thirty ninth minute and rapidly approaching halftime here on ESPN Plus. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel with you live from Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Catamounts and Mountaineers are tied at a goal apiece. Stay with us for our halftime report as we take a look at other third round action and reset the bracket for you in this exciting 2023 NCAA men's soccer tournament. Winner of this game advances to the quarterfinals. Broughton with the header, Olakainen with the flick. Pacella came on. Here's Lockerman. Pacella off Lehnert. A lot of contact, very physical play. Here's Bazzini looking for Johnson. Lehnert back pass, that's dangerous. Lee had to scramble for it, Bear is fouled. Yeah, dangerous moment here for West Virginia. Got to have better communicate, better contact really there by Lehner. He's got to get to Jackson Lee so he can clear that one out. And you see the whistle called there on Pacella. West Virginia bench wanting a card. It's not issued. I think that's what you call a professional foul sell from that man, Ryan Bear. <laughs> that is one of his specialties. He saw his goalkeeper was flailing out of position. Mountaineers needed to win that ball or win a foul. Yutaro Sukata got us started in the first three minutes of the match. 
But the Catamounts answered through Carter Johnson, his seventh goal of the season to level things just after the half hour mark. And that's where we stand in this third round clash. A lot of space on that far side for Vermont. Gebhardt charging forward. This looks promising for the Catamounts. Eh, maybe not that promising, Sebastian Gebhardt. A little bit optimistic. Well, interesting on that one, Freddie Jorgensen was tracking back, and rather than put pressure on the ball, he continued to get to that back line. So he allowed Gebhardt to have that space and time. I don't think as concerned with him taking that shot. So that was kind of the, the decision that he made, and it paid off for West Virginia in that moment. So Christou and Max Trethaway, the West Virginia native, has subbed on here for WVU. Olakainen to the bench along with Sergio Ors Navarro with under five minutes left in the first half. Looks as though Trethaway will slot in as an attacking winger, whereas Christou will settle in in the midfield. Look at how many shirts are on this side of the field. You get a great shot of it there. All of the play is on one side of the field here. And if you're Vermont in this moment, you're going to want to try and absolutely create some space out of that. Vermont asking the question again. Johnson scored one on his left foot. That would have been a mirror image on his right. Still a lot of space and time there for Carter Johnson. Broughton laid off him in that moment, and Carter Johnson was able to get that shot off. So, again, you, you see there in real time a couple of different situations where defenders had to make some decisions. And those are those happen in an instant and are not easy calls. Wathuta had it under control for a moment. It was stripped away by the Mountaineers. Not often that you see a team come into this stadium and outshoot WVU, but that's the case here in the first half. Vermont 12 shots, West Virginia 6. Vermont 5 shots on goal, West Virginia just 2. Mountaineers have only given up 7 goals in 11 matches at Dick Dulesque Stadium, one of them coming to Carter Johnson about 12 minutes ago. Talked about depth of attack for the Mountaineers, and I think we're seeing a lot of depth and attack here by Vermont. You come in thinking you got to stop 11 Bazzini, and of course Johnson's way up on that scouting report as well, but he has uh, really shined here today. Great work on the press to win it back for the Catamounts. Bazzini giving chase. Should be a goal kick here for West Virginia, and it is. Hustling back there and gets the deflection. Final minute of the first half, we're all squared at a goal apiece. Adam, what adjustments, if any, does Dan Stratford need to make at halftime? Oh, I think, um, you know, I think it's been a solid half for West Virginia. I think it's really got to start defensively and making sure that you are really rock solid back there. You've got to be, you got to take better care of the ball in the midfield because that has led to some transition moments and West Virginia really running back to goal and being scrambled. So I think it really starts there and making sure that you're winning these types of plays and not allowing giveaways to Vermont to allow these really good scoring opportunities that they have generated. I mean, I think from when you talk about building from back to front, Vermont has not done that. They've won that ball in the midfield. They've utilized the press and been uh, really good. Now, they've had good spells of possession when they've been in that attacking third and created quality chances. Um, so West Virginia is going to have to uh, clean that up in the midfield. And Vermont, I think this has gone really well for them. The game plan, I think, has been executed. The press has been effective. So I think it's really keeping that up and, and keeping that pressure on from that standpoint. Rob Dow's Catamounts are right there in it. We're level at a goal apiece at halftime.
Yutaro Sukata scored the opener. Carter Johnson answered for the Catamounts. It's West Virginia 1, Vermont 1 at the break. Our halftime report is next on ESPN+. Plus. Stay with us. And defend. And then that last point, they have not had large and long spells of possession, so that's going to have to be a little bit better here uh, for the Catamounts in the second half if they want to come away with a victory. Meanwhile, what are your keys for West Virginia? Handle the press. That has been a little bit of a challenge here. That was what changed the tide, I think, to go uh, for things to go Vermont's way. Uh, they need to be better organized in transition. That, that's a huge one. I think that's, uh, that's really big. And they've done well in defending the set pieces and also not allowing those. So West Virginia needs to continue to do that. But if you're grading West Virginia, not very well organized. It needs to be better organized after 45 minutes uh, in transition. Twilight hour here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Moon high above the stadium as we begin the second half. The teams have switched sides. Mountaineers in white from head to toe. Now attacking the goal to the left. Vermont in green from head to toe with gold trim and white numbers attacking the goal to the right. Now this is uh, terrific NCAA tournament soccer though, right? The, the margin for error is very, very thin. Vermont trying to get on the front foot here to begin this second half. I think trying to make West Virginia defend for longer periods of time. Try to reset the lineups for you. Johnson, Bazzini, and Murray still in in the attack for the Catamounts. The back line remains the same with Ashford and Barrett, the central defenders. Gebhardt and Lockerman, the fullbacks. For West Virginia in the attack, the same starters who began the game. And we'll see a yellow card issued here to Otto Olakainen, the junior midfielder from Helsinki, Finland. Third Mountaineer to be cautioned. I think what has the Vermont bench uh, yeah. displeased with is the timing and the studs mm. on that one. Uh, I think Otto is claiming uh, going for the ball or winning the ball, but um, going to lead to a card as we have a stoppage. I think trying to get the, the clock right. That appears to be so. Referees trying to sync up the clock. And by the way, Stephen Foster, our referee tonight, he was all over that yellow card to Olakainen. The assistants are Joseph Knopf and Alexander Parent. The fourth official is Jeffrey Skinker. Yeah, it was interesting to see the foul count heavily on Vermont side, but West Virginia, as you mentioned, booked twice in the in the first half and now booked here early in the second. Johnson has some space as we resume play on this near side. Had uh, Gebhardt overlapping, kept it himself. Yeah, Nick, when you talked about halftime adjustments, I failed to mention uh, just be uh, Johnson's shadow here in the second half. They have to get really, really tight in defending him and not let him um, have some of those opportunities that that he has had. It is interesting, Adam. They seem, the Mountaineers have seemed to have kept Yaniv Bazzini in check through most of this game. Bazzini, of course, the leading goal scorer for the Catamounts. Maybe focusing more attention on him and less on Johnson. But Johnson has just been superb. He's found space. He's been effective when he's on the ball. A lot of energy. Off it. Yeah, a lot of energy. You see him working back. Uh, Here he is again. Boris Navarro tracking back. This is Nick Lockerman on the far side. He can create from the wings. To Sidney Watuta. Catamounts enjoying all the possession here in the first three minutes of the second half. Johnson ran out of real estate, goal kick. Quickly reset the lineup for West Virginia. It appears to be the same as the starting 11 that began the match with Caldera, Sukata, and Orz Navarro in the attack. Luke McCormick slotted in as an attacking midfielder with Ryan Bear and Otto Olakainen in the middle of the park. The fullbacks remain Dante Huckabee and Freddie Jorgensen. The center backs still Max Broughton and Carlos Hernando. Formick was, was chasing that one down, and his uh, momentum just carried him 
out of bounds and giving the ball back to Vermont. And again, pressure by Vermont has, has forced some errors from West Virginia. So credit to Vermont for being effective. And West Virginia has to be, be better and cleaner in possession. Good ball over the top to find Bazzini. Yaniv Bazzini, the transfer from NC State, drops it all the way back to Zach Barrett. Barrett, a first-team All-Conference honoree. He's a senior who's been All-Conference all four years of his career with the Catamounts. Jorgensen skies it. Good control there from Rob Dow, the Vermont head coach. <laughs> Tried to trap it, got a, got a little bit away from him, but a good effort nonetheless. <laughs> Will that go in the scouting report for, uh, for next week? Should Vermont uh, <laughs> move on? But it, no, no Greg Burhalter behind the back pass ah. to Gebhardt mm -hmm. to get us going again with the throw in. Vermont in the NCAA tournament for the third season in a row. Went to the quarterfinals last year. Mountaineers in the NCAA tournament for the 16th time in program history. Went to the quarterfinals two years ago. Wathutas cross. Back post. Boy, that was a dangerous situation there. Murray, the 6'5 senior from Maine, was right there on that near side post. Yeah, I think what's going to be interesting here in this second half is getting into these wider spaces and maybe, you know, trying to, to shut down Johnson, who's been kind of working centrally, get that ball wide, and you have a huge target in, in Max Murray, and you just saw that one there, that opportunity. It'll be interesting to see if Vermont's uh, approach to, to the attack changes just a, just a bit. This Vermont team has reached the NCAA tournament three seasons in a row. That's a program record for consecutive tournament berths. Bazzini takes two Mountaineers to take the ball away from him. Caldera charging forward against Barrett. Tries to draw a foul, but he wins a throw in. Mountaineers just cannot seem to alleviate pressure at this juncture in the match. First six minutes, it's been all catamounts. First time the Mountaineers have had possession in the attacking third. They give it right away. Miscommunication between Bear and Caldera. Gebhardt slipped on the delivery. Look at the pressure again and the reaction from the bench. Can you hear it, Adam, right below us? Every time there's a tackle made on the other side of midfield, they go nuts. Yeah, a lot of energy here by Vermont. Really strong start here in this second half for the Catamounts. And I think, you know, West Virginia's preference is to build through that midfield. And I don't think there's a whole lot of shame in maybe trying to pop a few over the top and get some space in behind those defenders with as high a line as Vermont is playing right now. UVM is taking it right to West Virginia, the number five seed in the field, a team that beat the number one team in the nation a month ago. Look at the speed from Johnson. Slips it past Jorgensen. Great opportunity here for the Catamounts. Lee comes out. Murray touched it past him, but didn't have any more room. Goal kick. And I think that was a really good read there by Jackson Lee. He was either going to win it or force Murray to play that down the line. It would have been tough for him to get back on it and make a play. So a good job there by Jackson Lee in reading that play and forcing that one for a goal kick. You don't see too many teams come in here and force the issue, take it right to West Virginia. That has not been the case this season. The Catamounts are puzzling the Mountaineers right now. Good turn by Caldera. But a great recovery by Pacella, the midfielder, to win it back. Wathuta connects to Bazzini. Bazzini, low cross, deflected by Broughton. Well, this is as to script for Vermont when you talk about making West Virginia defend here in the second half. 100%, that's what's happened. West Virginia has been on the back foot of this one and really trying to figure out how to get the ball upfield and 
and get some of that possession back that they did have in the early going in the early stages of this one. And it's coming down to trying to win some second balls and trying to get one in transition. It's an onslaught here from the visitors. Trying to lay it back to Pacella, the captain. He lofts it over to Gebhardt, the right back. Gebhardt against Sukata, who's had to come back to defend. Throw in Vermont. Now we knew Vermont was a rock solid squad and that's 100% what they've shown today. Uh, resilience. And uh, now I think they're really putting together their their skill and talent and technical ability here in this in the second half. Let's see what Barrett can do here. Murray tried to flick it on. Lee is there on the second ball. Yeah, dangerous long throw there for Vermont. That is basically a set play there for the Catamounts. Just about 10 minutes gone in the second half of action at Dick Delesque Stadium. West Virginia and Vermont still knotted at a goal apiece. This is the first of eight games in the third round. The winner advances to the quarterfinals. That's an unforced error there from the back line for West Virginia. Yeah, Nick, I mean, that wasn't even close. You know, that was, uh, it just wasn't even close. Olakainen wins it back. Referee playing advantage. Can the Mountaineers make something of this? Not going to counter, but maybe can they settle into possession? Just trying to connect some passes here. It's been a challenge for West Virginia here. First 11 minutes of this second half. Just stringing a few together. You've had to see Sakata in more defensive positions and offensive positions here. Sukata was the goal scorer for West Virginia in the first four minutes of the game. Carter Johnson had the leveler just after the half hour mark. We've been knotted at a goal apiece since the 32nd minute. Here's Sukata. Decent ball there. McCormick's shot is deflected. Caldera trying to get involved. Caldera a rip! Why? Marcus Caldera can produce moments of magic, as you've noted. And this certainly would have been one of them. He knew he was lining it up. Try and get a uh, half volley on, on frame and a good effort. And for West Virginia right now, I think you take little victories there. That was, um, you know, not a terribly long uh, bout of possession, but, but enough. And he created a, a, a half chance there, uh, which, is, which is more than... Um, more than you've had here in the first 11-12 uh, minutes of the second half. Scramble for the ball. Pacella won it. Throw in Vermont. And Pacella was very physical on that line with Luke McCormick. I think it was uh, there might have been a foul come at some point. Even after the ball got away from McCormick, I thought like I, I thought that Pacella might have held on a little bit. Lee has to play it. Huckabee blasts it skyward. Good positioning by Barrett. Bear down to the deck, and this will have to be a yellow card for Pacella. Yeah, I, I think he's had one coming here for some parts here tonight. First catamount into the book, Daniel Pacella in the 58th minute. Yeah, kept that leg out there as he knew he was going to lose it. Although, once again, and I mean no disrespect by this, that is a very professional sell from Mr. Ryan Bear. That's, that's fair enough. I, I, I do think, though, having watched this, though, 
Do you, you feel like uh, Pacella probably had one coming with some sure. of his, some of the fouls and, and, and contact that, that, that have happened? So. Yeah, West Virginia's bench has been begging for it <laughs> throughout the second half. It's a fair point. No, I mean, it's all, it's all kind of part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not the exact same type of gamesmanship that you'd see at the professional level because the referee can use his judgment to stop the clock at certain intervals in the match. But beyond that, when it comes to fouls and yellow cards, penalty shouts as we saw in the first half for Yutaro Sukata, all very much the same. Well, it, you know what, I, I'd kind of even forgotten about that moment, Nick. That was a huge moment in this one that, that looked like Yutaro Sukata had earned a penalty and it didn't get called. Remember, we do have video assistant referee available. It was not chosen at that moment. We saw it come into play in the Louisville match in the second round. Referee elected not to go to the replay. Sukata, he has Caldera as a helper. Sukata wants to go left. Taken away. Good defending by Gebhardt, but it's a corner for double UVU. You see in the bottom of the screen there, Vermont's bench is thrilled. Again, every time... Their defender is able to handle Yutaro Sakata. The bench for Vermont is just excited. You get a good look at it here as, as Sakata's trying to find space. And keep Look at the back of the bench there. You see them all come off the bench. They are thrilled. You hear it from, from the crowd mics. They know what a challenge it is to keep him in check. And so every time you win those moments, you celebrate it. Changes for West Virginia. Three substitutions. Jorgensen, Ors Navarro, and Huckabee to the bench. Trethaway, Lehnert, and Casimir Lauber onto the field. Sukata from the corner flat. Decent service, headed skyward by Barrett, flicked again by a catamount near side, falls to Sukata. First touch for Casimir Lauber. Back to Sukata. Trethaway, the West Virginia native. Linking with the Tokyo Japan native Sukata, won emphatically again by Vermont. Mountaineers will retreat and reset. And we talk about trying to stretch Vermont's defense. That was not a defender out there on Utaro Sukata. That was Carter Johnson. So Vermont was able to stay compact in behind him. But this one is. Space for Sukata. Sukata's cross. Here comes Bear. It's wide. That would have been a cracking goal from Ryan Bear. Yeah, now keep an eye here on Marcus Caldera because I think he thinks a West Virginia player is closer than he is. See, he's just kind of wanting to go attack that ball. No problem there, says Oh, Jack, no problems. West Virginia now has found a little bit here. A little bit better in the last five minutes or so. Has to play with that energy. It's, you know, it's interesting. The stadium started to get a little bit into it. I think that's provided some energy here for West Virginia as of late. Sold out Delesk Stadium. Mountaineers put more than 3,100 fans in the seats for their second round win over the Cardinals. A brisk night in Morgantown that continues to get would it be brisker, more brisk? <laughs> more brisk, but if it's under 50, you're just, you're, you're freezing. You yeah, the uh, the folks who are watching this from, from uh, a Vermont perspective are like, yeah, that's, put your yap. That's right, we got short sleeves on. Up there. <laughs> 40 degrees and declining. No, but really all things considered for November in West Virginia, it's been a nice night to play soccer. Here's Caldera. Bear. Finds Sukata. He can be ball. dangerous in the box. Missing near post. That was a good ball there by Ryan Bear out wide to Yutaro Sakata. And we've seen Yutaro Sakata be really patient in some moments. That one got the ball off his boot a little bit uh, quicker, which I think was the right decision. Just that's a tough angle to try and score from, but wouldn't put anything past him. That was a tall order. We're past the hour mark in this third round clash between West Virginia and Vermont. All squared at one apiece, and we've been that way since the 32nd minute. Yutaro Sukata scored the opener for, for West Virginia on an assist from Marcus Caldera. About 28 minutes later, Carter Johnson 
found the equalizer for Vermont. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here with you on ESPN+. Plus. You're watching the NCAA tournament third round. Winner advances to the quarterfinals. This is Jacob Vitali on the ball. He just subbed on for Max Murray. This is the goal scorer Johnson now. Back to Gebhardt. Dangerous cross. Headed away by West Virginia. Kyle Lehnert was all over it. Lehnert against Wathuta. Lehnert took it away for a moment. Lobber is there to get a throw in for WVU. Good team defending by West Virginia. West Virginia is out there right now with out two of their outside backs, which is a different, oh, is a tough task there. You see the contact. And Wathuta immediately clutching that ankle too after the tackle from Lehnert. He was down during the replay. He's just gone back to his feet. Meanwhile, for West Virginia, a substitution. The goal scorer, Yutaro Sukata, comes off. He's replaced by Konstantinos Christou, the native of Nicosia, Cyprus, one of the top 20 freshmen in the nation, according to Top Drawer Soccer. Interesting change for West Virginia. Sukata was subbed off for a period of time against Louisville. Tactical decision. He came back on and scored the winner. Mountaineers really digging into their bench, too. Five substitutes used. Here's Caldera. That's Max Trethaway there oh. in, a, in a left back spot. Have to be careful with the extracurriculars. Marcus Caldera came in and put both of his hands into the back of Niels Hartman. No doubt it's been a physical game. We saw things get a little bit out of hand here in the second round in the matchup between the Mountaineers and Cardinals. Uh, uh, emotions are run high. We talk about playing desperate. Those, uh, those emotions come out when, you, when you're desperate and things maybe, maybe don't go your way. And, but it's, it's an emotional game, and that is part of the challenge is keeping that in check. And you have to know your status with cards and... and and how you can affect your, your team in the moment. Lobber passes it back, back to Max Broughton. Bear to Trethewell. Well, McCormick tried for a crafty flick. Now Trethewell is going to have to get back. Hernando trying to go through Vitali. Yeah, a little too clever there, I think, from Luke McCormick leading to the giveaway. Well, I think that in, in that moment, I think the game asked for maybe keeping the play a little bit more simple. Although everything has been really difficult against Vermont, you almost think that you need some, some of that magic and some of that touch and some of that flair to, to create some space and opportunities, but I think it's still a matter of, of, of trying to keep it simple. This has been a good shift from Casimir Labra on the far side for West Virginia. Christou gave it away. Johnson has a runner. Links with him. This is Gebhardt. Gebhardt's early cross is headed by Hernando. Bear has space. Bear wants to go deep. Great touch by Caldera. Does he have support? Here's Luke McCormick. McCormick! Wide left. That appeared to be the moment on the counter for West Virginia. Just did not have the class in the finish. Yeah, Marcus Caldera does a great job of bringing that one down. And then look at the, the Vermont defender takes a step back, and that allowed Luke McCormick to have more space and time than I think he expected. And not even able to put that one on frame has to be disappointed in not making the keeper come over and make a save. But you saw the Vermont defender take that, that half step back and then go forward. And that, that space, I think, might have surprised Luke McCormick in that, in that moment. Not a gimme for sure for McCormick. It's on his weaker foot. But you would like to test the keeper in that moment, as he did in the first half. Terrific save from Owen Jack that prevented it from becoming a 2-0 game in the first 10 minutes or so. Yeah, and we, we just saw him try to make maybe a, a too clever of, of a play off that back heel, but that one was very fundamental. Good, solid run, good overlap. 
So that was that was a good effort there in, in total there by Luke McCormick. Jack, the Vermont goalkeeper, has only had to make one save tonight. Meanwhile, Jackson Lee for West Virginia. Five saves, tying his season high. Mountaineers try to spring forward. Jake Ashford all over it. And this is the new entrant, Andrew Miller, for Vermont on the far side. Miller replaced Wathuta a moment ago at that left wing position, but you've still got two dangerous guys on the field in 11, Bazzini, and 13, Johnson, who's on the ball here now for the Catamounts. Broughton coming over, throw in. Vermont does, does look like a different team complexion, though, wise without Murray with his height and just kind of patrolling the middle of the field up top there for Vermont. They just, uh, and not, not better or worse necessarily per se, but just a different look that the Catamounts present. Wow, great flick from Johnson. Gebhardt. Well won by Hernando in the air. And well cleared there by Alakainen. Gebhardt's going to go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Owen Jack. 21 minutes remaining. West Virginia and Vermont have been level since the 32nd minute when Carter Johnson scored the equalizer. Opportunity here for the Catamounts. Vitali, referee's going to let them play on here. Vitali passed a defender. The cross, shot is deflected. Can Lee get there? He does. Yeah, I think even Vitali was expecting a huh. whistle to be called. <laughs> Perhaps everyone in the park was, except for the referee, Stephen Foster. And it almost resulted in a, in a Vermont goal as... as the Catamounts played on. An attempt there by Miller, who's had an excellent first season with Vermont. Broughton had to win it. No foul once again. Just a misstep there by Vermont. Here's McCormick as Gebhardt retreats. Final 20 minutes of action. Christou tried to lob a through ball into the box to Caldera, but it falls to Owen Jack. I think there was a moment there where Gebhardt was so far forward that it might have been an opportunity on a counterattack. Just West Virginia was not able to move as quickly as it would like to try and get something going. McCormick, so shifty. Great find to lobber. Can they link again? Here's McCormick. Oh, McCormick thought he had Christou heading for goal. Now this has been punch counter punch here in this last little bit. West Virginia and Vermont trading some chances. And, and Luke McCormick has been in the center of several opportunities here for West Virginia as of late. Not just about survive and advance for him. Yep. This has the potential to be the last time that he could ever put on a West Virginia uniform, Luke McCormick. That's a hard foul by Niels Hartman. Bear in the mix once again for West Virginia. And because of an injury, the referee will stop the clock for attention here. Hartman went down hard. You're going to get a look at it here. Oh. Collision. That's a tough one. That one. That one hurts on both. Nothing malicious in it, just an attempt on the ball. Just trying to win the ball. 
again, the word I, I like to describe in the, in, in the tournament is desperate. And these players are playing desperate, and, and you'll have some of those fouls. Um, and that can lead, you're walking that line uh, of being reckless. And that's what I think, you know, the West Virginia coaching staff is, is going to be asking the questions of trying to, you know, will there be any cards issued or, or who deserves a card? But it is, it is a fine line between when you're playing desperate and trying to win that ball and do everything that you can. And w whether you have malice or not, is it, a, is it potentially reckless at, some, at times? I don't know that that one was, but it certainly was aggressive. Well, Ryan Baer, who was brought down to the turf by Hartman on that aerial challenge is now receiving attention from the trainer for West Virginia, Ethan Solger. Keep going, Green, keep going. Pointing to his knee, it appears. Oh, maybe it's his nose. I, I, thought, I thought he was referencing that there was blood, and that might be what the deal is here for Bear. Meanwhile, changes from both sides. Wathuta back on for the goal scorer, Carter Johnson for Vermont. Sukata has entered the pitch. The player who's come off is Bear, holding that towel to his nose. It'll be interesting to see what shape West Virginia takes here. Yeah, you wouldn't expect Sukata to come in for Bear in a, sure. nor in a normal rotation. My assumption is that he was going to come on for either McCormick or Lobber. So now it's Priest, who's normally an attacking midfielder who has to slot into that defensive midfield role. That's a situation we'll continue to monitor here with about 18 minutes left in the second half. Ryan Bear status. One of the unsung heroes on this West Virginia team. Vermont closing the space on Trethaway. Passes over Olakainen. Bazzini into the attacking third against Christou. Not a great matchup for West Virginia, but Bazzini was maybe rushing that a bit. Yeah, we t you talk about the positioning of the West Virginia players. That is not a natural spot there for Christou. Has to find himself in a defensive posture against Bazzini. Again, this is going to be the challenge for West Virginia, this building out of this, out of the back. It's just not gone, I don't think, the way that they would like to here this evening. That's better there from West Virginia. Yeah. But a good recovery on this near side by Pacella and Barrett converging together. And Pacella's on a card, too, so he has to be careful with his physical play with Sukata. And, and one of the things that you know, we watch at times is body language. And I tell you right now, Utara Sukata is very frustrated out there for West Virginia. Vitali. A lot of white jerseys converging there. Clear toward midfield. Look at this. Casimir Laber, who has played minimal minutes this season, is essentially playing as the striker for West Virginia at this juncture with Caldera out wide on the far side and Sukata wide on the near side. Well, there's a trust in a lot of different players here um, in terms of Max Trethaway being at, at a left back spot and, and Kyle Leonard and at the same time at the right back. I know he's played a lot of right back, but getting a lot of minutes here. Um, so there's a lot of trust being shown um, about the West Virginia depth. Coach Stratford said it all year long uh, about the team's depth, depth and we are seeing it on display here. Ryan Bayer back into the match. That means Luke McCormick comes to the bench and the Mountaineers are able to, to regain a more normal shape. Bear and Olakine in the midfielders along with Priestu. The attackers are Sukata, Laber, and Caldera. And it's Sukata with a brilliant touch on this near side. Tried to take on three catamounts but couldn't split them. And I thought they were for a second, Pacella might might dive in to try to steal that ball. I think thought better of it being on the card. Well won there by Lobber. Caldera tries to drop it off to him. But it instead end, ends up at the boot of Lafuta. And again, let's we'll keep an eye on that West Virginia body language. A lot of shoulders dropped on that turnover. Some pointing, some some shrugging. Um, you know, West Virginia has to has to collect itself and compose itself. 
You're watching the NCAA tournament on ESPN Plus. Mountaineers and Catamounts nodded at a goal apiece with about a quarter of an hour to go in regulation. As Vermont knows well, if we're leveled after 90 minutes, we will play two 10-minute overtime periods. No more gold, golden goal. We will play a full 20 minutes of extra time if necessary. Catamounts won their second round game in extra time by defeating UCF on the road 3-2. And of course, if necessary, after 110 minutes, if we're all level, we'll go to penalties. This is Lockerman, wants to rip one. The coaching staff on this near side, Adam, telling him to take a chance, telling him to take a rip. Well, he scored from about that same spot on the field in the NCAA tournament. He had, it was only his first goal of the year, but it was a beauty. It was from 35 yards and it twisted and turned and uh, was, was just a, a believe, unbelievable strike. And so, yeah, you'll take your chances with Lockerman from, from distance. Good spell by Cass Lobber to the bench for West Virginia. Returning to the game is Freddie Jorgensen, also replacing Max Trethaway. Another new entrant for WVU is Ryan Crooks. That's him on the far side. This is his first action of the game. Crooks, another veteran player on this West Virginia team, 5'10", senior from England. Struggled with an injury during the early portion of this season, missing eight games. Bozzini to Pacella. Good intervention by Sukata. Sukata wants to go forward. Sukata has it taken away by Hartman. Deneev Bazzini. Who thought he had a runner in Johnson there. Crafty flick by Gebhardt. Yeah, Vermont's energy level here in the second half has continued to be exceptional, and I think a little bit half step, full step better than West Virginia. Throw in Vermont. We, we, we took a look at the travel and the wear and tear that the Catamounts have had through the first two rounds. None of that seems to be a factor here in the performance tonight against West Virginia. Cross into the box, Lee's all over it. 12 minutes left. Sukata scored in the fourth minute for West Virginia, the opener. The equalizer came from Johnson 28 minutes later. Three players for West Virginia in the book, Jorgensen, Broughton, Olakainen, all of them in the starting lineup. For Vermont, the midfielder, Daniel Pacella, also booked. Pacella, an interesting story. This is just his sixth appearance of the year, missed most of the game due to injury, but has been so critical in this NCAA tournament run now that he's healthy. This is Ryan Crooks. Crooks crossing, Sukata, late to get there but saves it. Layoff, Jorgensen over the bar. Well over, but it's a better chance there from West Virginia. A better sequence there for the Mountaineers. And, and really what you would like to see is Utaro Sakata with the ball at his feet in this spot. It was a nice job of creating an opportunity as Freddie Jorgensen runs on, just cannot keep that ball down and on frame. Crowd is trying to inject some life into the Mountaineer squad. And again, I think if this was an energy level um, situation, I think Vermont has the energy. West Virginia has to try and find a way to wrestle back some momentum and start flying around here like Vermont is. Throw in for West Virginia. Ashford, the center back, laid off it because he thought it was deflected. Approaching the final 10 minutes of this second half in the NCAA third round, the first of eight third round contests in the national tournament. Nick Farrell and Adam Zundel here with you on ESPN Plus. The winner of this match between West Virginia and Vermont moves on to the quarterfinals. Mountaineers went there two seasons ago. Catamounts went there last year, losing to eventual national champion Syracuse. 
a critical final 10 minutes in this contest. Great passing from West Virginia. Crooks on the ball. The cross into the box is headed away for the moment by Hartman. Falls to Christou. Christou deflected corner West Virginia. White shirts got into the box that opportunity and in that final third. Able to generate a corner kick here at a critical moment. And again, this is a, that actually is a pretty good spot there for, for Vermont to defend. They're comfortable in that spot. Here comes a, a critical corner here for the Mountaineers. Broughton, it's in! Max Broughton, the transfer center back, has put West Virginia in front again. 2-1 Mountaineers in the 82nd minute. It was a critical moment here for West Virginia. This crowd is going crazy, and Broughton does the job to get to that near post and head it in. A terrific goal there by West Virginia. So on. Get a couple of looks at it. Great service there by Jorgensen, and Broughton wins it and puts it on frame. Uh, Owen oh, Jack got a pot to it at him. He was nearly there to save it. But Broughton, who scored on the road against UNC Greensboro, a game winner on a set piece, may have just done it again for West Virginia. Still nine minutes to play. But as it stands, it's the go-ahead goal for WVU off the service from Freddie Jorgensen on the corner kick. Yeah, let's see some substitutions here for West Virginia. Try to manage this lead down the stretch. You know you're going to get Vermont's best shot here to try and find another equalizer again not been a, a stranger to adversity so I don't expect the Catamounts to flinch all that much and again this is uh, off the kickoff this is what Vermont likes to do send players all on one side send it back and then get it forward try to get something off that it's almost a, like an onside kick look that's what I was going to say it resembles an onside kick in American football oh here's Caldera against two center backs look at the strength between these two Barrett and Caldera Sweeping in is Ashford to clean it up. Uh-oh, Crooks with the takeaway. This could be it for West Virginia. Caldera is in an offside position. Oof. The crowd late to react to it, but Caldera was ahead of the last defender. And that, turn, that turnover happened so quickly that Caldera is not able to get. Oh. That is very close. Was close. That is very close. That's the second time that we've had maybe a 50-50 decision in this game yeah. that has gone to Vermont in the 37th minute. What appeared to be clear contact on the box to Utaro Sukata was not given as a penalty. That time, a goal wiped off by offside. Remember, we do have VAR available. It has not been brought into the mix just yet by the referee, Stephen Foster. Eight minutes to go. Mountaineers lead thanks to the header by Max Broughton. At the beginning of this season, Dan Stratford said he knew he had the attackers, but did he have the defenders? He went to the transfer portal. He found Max Broughton, Carlos Hernando, Brayden Borutsky, and Dante Huckabee, as well as Toma Di Cotone, who is inactive for tonight's match. All five of those guys have been critical for WVU at the back in, at some point this season. Three of them in the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, and if you look, Broughton has nice size, but he's not the biggest and tallest guy out there. Uh, we talked about the size that Vermont has. That was that was timing and effort and hustle to get to that ball and, and win the header and put it on frame to provide West Virginia the go-ahead goal. Free kick here for UVM. Max Murray, the player, taken down. Four players have received yellow cards. Jorgensen, the goal scorer, Broughton, and Ola Kynan for West Virginia have all been cautioned. Well, interesting. Look at number three. He's got almost looked like he's got a paper. Oh my goodness! Shouting instructions. You see him uh, right right around the circle there. That's Gebhardt. He did just receive a note from the bench. Look at this. Lee was fouled as he went up for it. Adam, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, you can't call a timeout That's in right. soccer, right? If you're going to talk tactics to a player, you might as well give it to your 6'1 grad student in Gebhardt to get everybody organized for this last push. That is uh, that is 
That's, that's, I've never seen that either. Now, what do you do? No pockets. If it falls out, <laughs> does West Virginia take it and say, hey, steal their homework? <laughs> My goodness. I, I have a feeling it probably won't be necessary. Uh, I, I, regardless of how this turns out, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be necessary. Final six minutes. This is Max Murray against Carlos Hernando. Murray able to poke it to Watuta. Watuta playing on the near side for the first time in this second half. We are surely in for a frantic finish to this contest. Gebhardt's long ball is controlled by Lee, hasn't handled it yet, and now he does. That was a good job by Jackson Lee to, to steal a couple more seconds on that. Um, be curious to see what was on that sheet as we watch it. Well, we won't be able to see it until uh, until later, and I'm not sure I want to, quite honestly, but uh, <laughs> um, I'll be curious to see how it looks here for Vermont and the changes that they have made. You mentioned Bethuda on the near side as opposed to uh, uh, opposite. Uh, also, it appears that it's more of a true three at the back now for Vermont as Lockerman has moved up as the far side winger. Crooks can't win it on the sliding challenge. Bear is all over Bazzini. Bazzini finds Watuta. Five minutes left. Chance for Vermont. Back post. It's over the 6'5 striker Murray. Lockerman is there by the corner flag. He'll quickly take the corner. That was a critical moment for West Virginia on the corner. And here's a critical moment here for Vermont. We talked about their size all day, uh, but it's not always the, uh, the tallest player. You got to have that effort. Can the Catamounts answer from the corner? Broughton, who scored the goal, able to head it away. That was a, a, good, a big time win there by Broughton to come out and get that ball out of the box. Right back into the mix. Barrett and Murray on top of it. Here's a cross from Lockerman, headed again by Broughton. Deflected in the box. Lee is on top of it, and the referee saying no to a penalty appeal. Thought we may have had contact or a handling there. That's true. There was, there was definitely a deflection here as we're going to take another look at it. And again, this is chaos here down the stretch. Watch this ball come in. That uh, looks like uh, Jorgensen shielded us there. But uh, if you watch the Catamount players, none of them made a really strong appeal. That's usually the best um, indicator if, if something actually happened. But if they didn't uh, have a dramatic appeal... Max Murray had better be careful here. He is berating the referee, Stephen Foster. Ryan Bear. In the middle of it again. <laughs> the toughest guy on this pitch. I mean, Vermont has some tough dudes on this team. Don't get me wrong. But Bear has been in the middle of just about every important sold foul for WVU tonight. One of the unsung heroes on this team. Yeah, quite honestly, the longer that Max Murray argues that, the, the more time that can be taken off the clock. Right, and again, it's the referee's discretion to stop the clock. Stephen Foster electing not to do so there. Bear has somehow won that ball back for WVU. Will Luke McCormick go to the corner flag here? McCormick wins an important corner. That's huge for West Virginia. Uh, you see the body language now for Vermont as uh, Niels Hartman took a swing at the corner flag in frustration. West Virginia going to make a couple of subs here. Jake Ross and Brayden Borutsky. Ross 13, Borutsky 4 onto the pitch. Both of them their first minutes. Crooks is coming to the bench for West Virginia. Ross, the 6'4 freshman from Delaware, presents good size for hold-up play for WVU. Meanwhile, it looks like it's going to now be a back five for West Virginia to try to salt this victory away. Clock is stopped with roughly two and a half minutes remaining in this game. No white jerseys in the box here for West Virginia's sixth corner kick. Adam probably just going short, it trying go, to waste going time. Going short and win another corner. Go back, go right back to it. Mountaineers don't do so. Here's Pacella. They might win a throw in here, though. Wathuta has to get there, and he does. McCormick charges on to put it into touch. And again, that's even a, a, a good play. Knocking that ball out of, out of play. Wasting some precious seconds here. Just over two minutes left. West Virginia in the lead thanks to a late goal by Max Broughton on a corner kick. This is Carter Johnson who scored the goal in the first half for Vermont. 
cleared away by Kyle Lehnert. Boy, has he played an important role. Yeah, and as good as Carter Johnson has been, and he was flying around here early in the second half, has been very quiet from him here as of late. Latuta trying to get central. 90 seconds left. Yeah, Vermont has to create some chaos here in these last 90 seconds to try and get a goal. West Virginia's got a lot of defenders back. So Vermont's going to have to work hard to try and create a, a scrambled situation. There's chaos! Oh, what a save! Or maybe deflected by Hernando. Borutsky can't clear it. Lehner does. Quick restart from the Catamounts. Final minute of this game. Into the box again. Bazzini can't put it on goal. Whether Jackson Lee got a hand to it or not, it's already a season-high six saves before that. That's the biggest moment in the match. I got to tell you, Vermont got a really good look at this. Better than I would expect in this last moment. Oh, my goodness. What a piece of defending here in this final stretch as the clock continues to run. Uh, Listen to this sold-out crowd. 20 seconds remaining. The Mountaineers may need one more stop. You'll hear the countdown from the public address announcer. Luke McCormick sends it forward. The road to the College Cup runs through Morgantown. The Mountaineers survive, and they're heading back to the quarterfinals for the second time in three seasons. This time, though, Dan Stratford and company will host that match. Full time in Morgantown, West Virginia 2, Vermont 1. The Mountaineers move on with a really gritty performance. Vermont give them a lot of credit. Terrific play by the Catamounts here today. West Virginia had to scratch and claw and figure out a way to advance, but that is what this time of year is all about. You got to figure out a way. West Virginia moves on. It'll either be LMU or JMU.